Hello, this is Paul Sutherland coming to you from Placerville. Uh, this video is a little different than all of the others I've done before because I'm not really going to show you specific licks or patterns on the fretboard. I want to talk about a tuning issue and how you fix it with a compensator. And uh, this is actually take two because the first take I got so muddled up in my conversation. This is kind of hard to talk about, but uh, it's e easier to do it orally than to write it. Um, this is for people who tune just intonation. Just intonation means sweetened tunings. Uh, if you use a Peterson, it's the sweetened settings. Um, if you tune straight up, uh, e also called equal temperament, this video is not for you. And just please turn it off. It's not for you. The reason I'm talking about this mechanical issue and tuning issue is because this is a predicate to the next video that I want to make, which is really where I'm going with this. If you don't have this compensator, you're probably going to find that some parts of what I'm going to show you don't sound very good. Um, this was a very significant development for me when I put this compensator on this old Emmons. Oh, it was probably less than a year ago. And I immediately thought, wow, that sounds pretty good. And then I kept using it. Uh, this is the third compensator I've tried and the other two didn't last long because I didn't like them. The other two were linked to floor pedals. This one is on the F-sharp string and although many many people, probably the majority of people that use compensators including on the F-sharp have it linked to either the A floor pedal or the B floor pedal, um, I have it linked to a knee lever. The knee lever that I have it linked to is the same one that lowers the second string half tone and on my guitar lowers the ninth string half tone. Same time it does those things, it's lowering a, a, a string on the, e, on the C6 neck, but it's doing one more thing. And the reason I like this compensator, among the reasons I like this compensator is I hardly even feel it. it it's, it's works perfectly. And I'm no push-pull mechanic genius. I work on my own guitar, but it... Um, anyway, this compensator lowers the first string slightly. Hopefully you can hear that. It's not lowering it a half tone. It's lowering it probably less than an eighth of a tone. It's taking that F sharp from being slightly above concert pitch to being below concert pitch. And it's basically taking an F sharp down was supposed to be matching the fourth string. Nah, they're not quite matching right now. What it's doing though is it's giving me into um, it's making a nice round third and fifth interval on the um I'm, I'm excuse me a first and third interval when I when I lower this pedal or this knee lever. Uh, which you can't see me doing it, but um, what it's doing is giving me, in the key of D, it's lowering the, lowering the, D, the D sharp string, the second string, down to D. The D becomes my new tonic. And I want, I want a third above that. The third above is an F sharp, but it has to be, um, it has to be flattened to be a just int intonation. And, and whereas at the same time, when you don't, when, you, when I use this one and two strings against the fifth string, that's an open B chord. So five is, when, when I'm playing the open B chord with five string, five is the five is the one, um, two is the uh, three chord, or the, the three interval, and the five, it, the, uh, the first string is the fifth interval. Well, the fifths, fifths are slightly sharpened when you are in just intonation. Not a lot, but slightly. But thirds are significantly flat. Well, uh, with my Peterson, that D sharp tunes up just fine. I don't, I don't have any issues with that. But then when I when I want to create, I want to create this a D, it's actually a D. And I'll explain why in a second. The D, um, the D sharp goes down to D and that F sharp has to come down a little bit so it goes from being a sharp fifth interval to being a, um, a flattened third interval. Not a flat third interval, but a flattened third interval, if that makes sense. 
So that should, it should reasonably ring true. Now if I just, to show you how this would, if I, um, another way to think of this is use the key of E. On the key of E you would play strings 3 and 4, and you want that to be a nice sweet sounding chord. 4 is the tonic, and 3 is the third interval. Now I'll put the bar on the second fret, I want the exact same thing. Right, second fret and use strings 1 and 2, and use that knee lever, lowering the second and a half, and compensating down the first string. Why is that important? Okay, well let me, let me just try to play a little bit to show you the value of this. Um, I'll go to the key of G because I've done so much in the key of G. Hopefully you already know that in G, if I, I've, I've got my regular G triads here, three, four, five. I want to go to a four chord. I can just go down to strings five, two, and one. No pedals, no level levers. That's that's a that's a four chord. That's a C chord. C chord at the fifth at the first fret. Doesn't seem to make sense, but it works. A five chord. Play strings five, two, and one, and go up to the third fret. And I've got a G. We can extend this. If I if I leave off the fifth string, whoops! You have to remember the pattern. I forgot the pattern. videos where I'm going to go into more of the actual uses. I didn't ever used to go up and play, okay, let's stop for a second. Key of G, third fret, we all, I always could reach out and grab one and two. But I never used to be able to go up to the fifth fret, put the pedals down, and reach out to one and two because they were so out of tune. That first string was so sharp that it just sounded glaring to me. And so I basically never played it. But now I do play it because now it's in tune. And by the same token, uh, when I would play, when I would play from the pedals down position in the key of G, so pedals down 10th fret. And then you, you go to the five chord, so you now we're going to a D chord. I never used to reach out and play one and two. I could play one of the strings, but not both of the strings, because they were so out of tune. But they're not now. And they're not now because the compensator lowers that first string. So I can play one and two, which are the right scale notes. If you're trying to play in a major, major scale based song. And one reason to have this compensator on that second string half tone lower is if you put it on, if instead of having that uh, on the first string, I, I said second string half tone lower, well yeah, it's on the, the compensator, the first string compensator is on the second string half tone lower lever on my guitar. If you put that on a floor pedal, like I think most people do it on the A floor pedal, then when you go to that, uh, the D chord position, where, which would be the 10th fret, and you can't reach out and hit one and two together because you have no compensator because you're not using the A floor pedal. Unless you, I mean, you, you can't use the A floor pedal unless you push the A pedal down. But I don't, which you can do melodically, but um, if, you, if, you do, if you don't want to have to do that, To me, 
what what this compensator does is it opens up the for one and two strings for playing two note harmonies. Lots more that it will do, but I think that's the point. Oh, I wanted to say, um, like almost everything you do with a pedal steel, there's compromises. I have this on a knee lever that lowers the half, this compensator on a knee lever that lowers the second and a half tone. I am probably in the minority of the steel population in only lowering the second string a half tone. Virtually all new steels come with that full tone lower with a half stop. And I don't know that you can put this compensator on a pedal that has the full tone lower with the half stop on that second string. Um, I long ago gave up having the full tone lower on the second string, and I really don't feel the loss. Um, to me, it's a good trade-off. I because I use that second string half tone lower all the time, and I use it, and I hit it fast, and I'm on and off it. <laughs> And I don't know that you can hit a half tone lower and have it in tune if you're having to play fast. I, I, if it's a feel stop, you kind of have to feel it and finesse it, which you, people can do, but can you do it fast? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure you can. And I'm certainly not clear, it's not clear to me that mechanically it's going to be very easy to put a compensator on a pedal that has the full half tone lower. Now, everybody says, well, but now you're going to lose that, that, that intro. I can't remember what the song is, where unison notes and then one note goes up and one note goes down. Well, you mean this one? Let me try me. I almost never play this on the bandstand. That, that's my verse. I'm using a bar slant. Um, if that's the only lick that justifies keeping a full half tone lower, you can live without it. And you, I think you will be miles ahead by having your first and second strings be in tune as you work through the pedal positions up and down the neck. That's, to me, infinitely more useful. So, um, thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you shortly.